Hi, welcome to my presentation, Engaging Education with Edpuzzle. My name is Tyler Callahan, and I'm a Digital Integration Facilitator for Moore County Schools. When you have videos that you want students to watch, have you ever asked yourself any of these questions? If so, Edpuzzle is the answer. With Edpuzzle, you can beef up those YouTube videos with embedded knowledge checks, or you can see which students are actually watching those screen recordings you spent hours making and remaking. Edpuzzle videos result in increased student engagement and can be a valuable formative assessment tool for teachers. Before we get started, let's take a look at how Edpuzzle fits into the engineering design process we use in Moore County Schools. Edpuzzle can be used to introduce problems students will be solving as well as identifying or recalling prior knowledge students may have about a problem. Teachers can use open-ended questions in Edpuzzle as a brainstorming space for students to note their initial ideas about a problem. Another great use of Edpuzzle open-ended questions is the ability to reflect on what worked, what didn't work, and how you can make things better next time. Now with that brief introduction in the rearview mirror, let's get you set up with Edpuzzle so you can start using it with your students. To create an Edpuzzle account, go to edpuzzle.com and click sign up in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Sign up as a teacher using your Google account or create an Edpuzzle account using your email address. If you have plans of using Edpuzzle with Google Classroom, signing up with a Google account makes that much easier. You can also integrate Edpuzzle into your Canvas courses. We'll be looking at both learning management systems a little later on. Next, choose your school. If your school is not listed, use the provided link to add your school or organization. After listing your grade level or grade levels and subject area or subject areas, you're ready to start teaching with Edpuzzle. All right, so I'm just going to go start to finish and create a, an assignment in Edpuzzle, and then I'm going to assign it to some classes and show you what that looks like from a student view in both of those uh, LMS is I'm going to do that for Google Classroom and then I'm going to do that for Canvas. Okay, so we're going to find a video and we're going to edit it for an assignment that we're going to use with our kids. If you have a YouTube video already in mind, you can just paste that right in here and it will take you directly to that video. Or if you have a video that you have made, you can add that here by uploading a video. So if you have a screen recording of you going over some of your content, you can upload that video here and embed questions. So for this example, I'm going to find a video from Crash Course, maybe this water video. And I've watched this before, so I know this is good, but I don't want them to have to do the entire like 12 minute video. So I'm going to go in here and edit this. All right, so I'm going to drag to the section of the video that I want. So I've found the specific section of this video that I would like students to watch. And now I'm going to go in and now I've clipped this video. You see now this video is just one minute and five seconds. So now I'm going to find the point. Now I'm going to find the point in the video that I want to add questions. Once I've found the point in the video that I want to ask a question, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go up here to multiple choice question and I'm going to type in my question. Okay, I have my answer choices here, my correct answer and my incorrect answer, and I'm going to hit save. I'm going to click save. And that's the question that's going to show up for students. I'm going to continue my video, and I'm going to find the uh, next spot in my video that I want to ask a question. So I found my next point that I'd like to ask a question, and I'm going to change this to an open-ended question. My water. Now I see a preview of what that question looks like for students. My water molecule in a particular way, and this is actually the way that it appears. It is V-shaped. Because this big old oxygen atom is... I'm going to add a little note here. Is a little... So as students watch the video, 
this little note pops up. It doesn't require anything for the students to do, just to provide information to students as they watch the video. Is a little bit more. So I found another point in the video. I'm going to add another question. So I want to show you what some feedback looks like um, for questions. You can provide feedback for students. So now I get a preview, and as the teacher, I can see the feedback that students will see when they uh, select those answer choices. So I'm going to provide another note. I'm going to include another multiple choice question at this point in the video, providing feedback to each answer choice. Feedback is one of the most effective pieces of learning, whether it be remote or in person. Let's look at how to set up your Google Classroom courses in Edpuzzle. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up a Google Classroom in Edpuzzle. So when you're logged into Edpuzzle, you click the My Classes tab. And over on the left side, you'll see the courses that you have already um, tied to your Edpuzzle account. If you want to add a new class, this is how you add Google Classroom classes. This is not how you do uh, how you make a Canvas course show up here. Canvas courses show up in your My Classes list after you've created an assignment inside of Canvas. So you have to do that first. You have to make the assignment in Canvas before it will show up here. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But for Google Classroom, this is how you add a class. If you click Add New Class, you see the button here for Google Classroom. And it'll automatically link all of your courses and you just check the box for the courses that you'd like to import. And that'll import all of your students. Another way you can create a Google Classroom is by clicking the Add New Class button and then Create New Class. And if you hit Create New Class, it'll take you to this page. And if you click Import Class, click Google Classroom, um, it's the same screen, a little bit different um, view. And you would just check those boxes of the courses that you'd want to add or import into your Edpuzzle account. Now, the option here where you can create an account um, or create a, a new class, the classic and open, this would be um, something if you don't have a, an LMS in your district, you could um, use these. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to show you Google Classroom and Canvas. Now let's take a look at how to assign Edpuzzle videos to students in Google Classroom. With my assignment created, I can find it in My Content. So I'm going to go to Content, My Content, and I'll be able to see that, that uh, video that I have created with the embedded questions. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like when you assign it to a class. First, I'm going to show you Google Classroom. So I'm going to assign this to my Google Classroom. So I have uh, all my classes here. I see my Google Classrooms have the Google Classroom icon. My Canvas classes have the Canvas icon here. You can assign directly to Google Classroom from Edpuzzle. Now I'm going to assign this to my class. I'm going to click Assign. Uh, here you can adjust your due dates and start dates and all that stuff. Um, what's important is uh, this button here, you can prevent students from skipping ahead and just going straight to the to the questions. That's an important feature that keeps students accountable. I um, can also choose to go ahead and make this a post on Google Classroom. So I'm going to click Assign. So now here are the students in that course, and I can see that uh, how they've progressed through the assignment. So now I'm in the student view of this assignment. And I'm going to open this up, and when students click this, they're going to go through and watch this video. So we're going to do this real quick. Investigating I'm going to cut the, the sound down on water. this. In order to do that, we're going to have to start out with this. A little this. bit. All right, so I'm going to cut the sound down pretty low on this video. All right, so here's my first question. 
And I'm going to choose this answer and hit submit. Yeah, you got it right. All right. Keep going. And you'll be able to see across the bottom here the, the green is, is a correct answer. If there's a red, that's an incorrect answer. So this next question here, this is an open-ended question. And I'm going to answer that. And then I'm going to click continue. Notice that that open-ended question did not change to red or green because it has not been graded by the teacher yet. So here's just a little quick note. Click continue. Students progress through the video. Uh, notice that the note did not change from red uh, to red or green because it is not a graded question. It is just providing information to the students. So the video is going to play. We're going to get to the next part. Now this is a question, if you remember, I put some feedback on the answer choices. So what makes water molecules attracted to one another? I'm going to choose an incorrect answer on purpose to show you what the feedback looks like there. So when I click submit on this incorrect answer, um, I can see from the student view, I can see the correct answer here and the feedback here and then I see the feedback here for the other answer choices as well. So we're going through this video. Um, again, that's just a little note. And then as we get to the next multiple choice question here, true or false, hydrogen bonds are much stronger. Uh, that is false. Click submit. Yeah, I got it right. There's my feedback there. Now, to complete the assignment um, as a student, you would have to watch it all the way through to the end of the video. All right, so then I get the message here that I'm done. I can show my results, and I see that I have some things left to be graded. Now, on the teacher view, here's the teacher view of this assignment. Uh, the way you can get there is a couple different ways to get back to that screen. So if I go to my classes, I can go to this robotics class, and I can see that this assignment here has one new answer. And I can get back to, to that exact same page. So I can click this blue button here that says one answer to grade, and I can go through and I can say, all right, uh, how do covalent bonds hold atoms together. I, that's right. I'm going to give that a check. And now I've graded all my answers. So now I can go back to my classes and I can see that that class is good to go. If I go to gradebook, I can go and see that this student um, received a score of 63 and they watched the video. And they got a 75 on this video. They got three out of four questions correct. Now let's take a look at how to assign Edpuzzle videos to students in Canvas. To use your Edpuzzle assignments in your Canvas course, the Edpuzzle app must be added from your Canvas course settings. You're going to go to the settings of your Canvas course and you're going to search for Edpuzzle. Make sure you spell that correctly. You're going to search for Edpuzzle. And if it's not added, you would click Add App, and it's going to ask you for Consumer Key and Shared Secret. The place you find those is in your Edpuzzle account. If you go to your little icon and then click your name, and you go to your school, if you scroll down, you'll see LMS LTI Integration. And this is where you select Canvas, and your Consumer Key and Shared Secret are generated for you. The Edpuzzle app must be added to each Canvas course you intend on assigning videos to. This one-time step is good for the duration of your course. With Edpuzzle added as an external tool submission type, you can start assigning Edpuzzle videos to your students in Canvas. For Google Classroom, we assigned it to Google Classroom through Edpuzzle. For Canvas, it works just a little bit different. I'm going to go into the actual course that I'm going to use and I'm going to create an assignment in a module or however you have you know however you have your courses set up so I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new assignment and I'm going to call this um, assignment water and puzzle video and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit that assignment inside of canvas so I'm going to go to edit, edit this assignment 
put some directions here for students. Maybe I'm going to tell them to watch the Ed Puzzle video and Okay, so for my submission type, this is the important part. You're going to go to external tool, find, scroll down and find Ed Puzzle. And now it's going to link me directly into my Ed Puzzle account. So I'm going to go and find that video. This is the one I want. I want to click assign. And now this is being, uh, once I hit select, now this has been added in my Canvas course. I'm going to save and publish. Now, let's take a look at what an Edpuzzle assignment looks like for students in Canvas. So now I'm in Canvas as a student in that course, that, that assignment, that video has been assigned. I'm going to go in and open that up, and you see from the student view here, that Edpuzzle video is embedded directly inside of Canvas. They don't have to leave Canvas in order to access it. So I'm going to turn the volume down again. So now I'll be able to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go through, it'll, it'll pop up in the in the video those questions um, I'm gonna answer that here click submit scroll down click continue I'm gonna fast forward through some of this since it's the exact same video we've already watched a few times This was the same video, the same questions, just in a different LMS, the same notes. So you see students get the message after they've answered the questions that they still have to watch the entire video in order to turn in the assignment. And then I can see that I have gotten three out of correct and one's left to be graded. Now let's take a look at what grading Edpuzzle videos in Canvas looks like. So now I'm back in Canvas and I can go to that assignment and go to the speed grader where I will see um, the submissions. Now that students have submitted the assignment, we're going to move to Ed Puzzle and grade the open-ended questions from the My Classes tab. From my Classes tab, I can see that in this Canvas course that I have a new answer here and I'll need to grade that answer and I see oh that's not correct um, that is incorrect with the open-ended questions graded let's go back into canvas and take a look at how the Edpuzzle grades transfer to the canvas gradebook from my canvas gradebook I can see the grade of 75 for the assignment but what if I decided to go back and give partial credit for an open-ended answer Let's adjust the credit awarded on an open-ended question to see how those changes reflect in Canvas. From my Edpuzzle gradebook, I'm going to choose the course, and then I'm going to find the assignment that is going to need to be changed. Once I've found that, I'm going to scroll down and find the open-ended question that I want to change the credit awarded from 0 to 50. The grade has gone from a 75 to an 88. That grade change can immediately be seen in my Edpuzzle gradebook as well as my Canvas gradebook. So let's recap what we've done so far. We have created Edpuzzle accounts. We have created assignments in Edpuzzle editing videos. We have looked at both the teacher and student view for Edpuzzle assignments in Google Classroom and in Canvas. Let's take a look at some other things I like about Edpuzzle, then we'll put a bow on this video. Edpuzzle also has a Chrome extension. If you search for the Edpuzzle Chrome extension, you can add that to your Google Chrome browser. With the Edpuzzle extension installed, you'll see this option here below your YouTube videos. If you find a video on YouTube, and you want to edit it directly into Edpuzzle, you can click that link and it will automatically bring that YouTube video into your Edpuzzle editor. Now I've never done this, but maybe some of you have. 
But have you ever switched to a different tab to let a video play in the background just because you had to let the video play? Edpuzzle will automatically pause the video a student is watching if they go to a different tab during an assigned video. I know, they've thought of everything. In this example, a student opens a new tab to check out the latest fantasy football news while he thinks the video is continuing to play in the background. But, to his surprise, when he comes back to the Ed Puzzle tab, the video did not continue to play while he was trying to figure out which free agent he's going to try to pick up for this week. Let's take a look at some of the data you can pull from using Edpuzzle assignments. So if I go to a course that has a little bit more, a few more grades than that one, um, I can see that if I look at this assignment, I can see who's watched the assignment, how they've uh, fared on the answers, when they completed it, how long um, they watched the video. You know, if, if the green line is all the way, that means they watched the entire video. And if I click on a, a specific student, I'll be able to see how many times that student has watched that video um, or re-watched a section. And I can see each answer choice that they provided. Lastly, I want to show you some of the resources that Edpuzzle provides its users. Whether you are a beginner with Edpuzzle or a seasoned pro, their tutorials and teacher resources will undoubtedly provide you some nuggets of information to add to your toolbox. If you're signed into your Edpuzzle account, you can click the question mark and go to the Help Center. It's organized into lots of different categories and I'm not even going to begin to scratch the surface with this, but there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. And if you have a question, check in the Help Center, and there's a good chance you'll find the answer, and you may find the answer to something you didn't know you had a question to. The Edpuzzle YouTube channel contains lots of helpful videos and playlists that can help make your instruction more engaging. There are LMS-specific tutorials, content area-specific tutorials, recorded Edpuzzle webinars, ideas and ways to integrate other digital tools with Edpuzzle, and much more. The Edpuzzle blog is another great resource to harvest ideas on how to use Edpuzzle with your students. Whether you're a classroom teacher, a technology facilitator, curriculum support, or administration, the Edpuzzle blog is a great place to look for the latest Edpuzzle updates and instructional ideas. If you use Twitter, the Edpuzzle Twitter account does a great job of sharing out how teachers are using Edpuzzle in their classrooms. I've been able to connect with teachers all over the world that are using Edpuzzle in ways I would not otherwise think about. Time for some audience participation. Go to the Padlet URL or scan the QR code to join. Thanks for watching. At this point, I've made a Padlet for us to put some ideas down and any comments or questions you may have about this video. You can get to the Padlet by going to padlet.com slash jcallahan9 slash edpuzzle. When you're there, I have different columns here. Um, any comments or questions that you may have related to this presentation, you can put in this first column. Um, then the next column here are any ideas that you may have thought of or are already using. And then uh, the third column here is just anything for the good of the group. If you have a question about remote learning or, or something that you just would like to see if anyone here knows the answer to um, that would help your teaching, you can put it in this column here. And then this next column, if you just wanted to share a little bit of any wisdom or good advice that you've been given. It's always nice to, to share out those things with other teachers. The next column here, I put in some links to some of the things that we've mentioned in the video. And then lastly, just for fun, uh, the best meme or GIF that you've seen lately. I really like this one back when all uh, the 
COVID pandemic began, someone posted this um, this little GIF of assigning remote work to students. I thought that was pretty uh, pretty good. So to add to these, if you've ever used Padlet before, if you've never used Padlet before, you just find the column that you'd like to add and click the little plus sign. And you can put a, a title or heading. You can type, some, uh, type something here. You can also upload files and links um, as well. To earn CEUs, fill out the unique session evaluation for this presentation by going to the case sensitive link in blue or by scanning the QR code with your smart device. This form must be filled out no later than November 30th. All unique certificates will be sent on December 1st. If you'd like to see the Google Slides I tried to follow for this video, you can access them at the case sensitive link in blue or by scanning the QR code with your smart device. Thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to the Edpuzzle conversations on the Padlet.